If you ever wondered why Google began suggesting certain apps and games within the Play Store, it's likely based on something you have installed in the past. A great example would be if you began seeing racing games suggested in Google Play, but you have a history of not enjoying those types. These suggestions are likely being surfaced because you had a single racing game downloaded and installed from many years ago. We can now tell Google which apps we want to see personalized suggestions based on with the new personalization in play setting. So today, I can show you how to remove apps and games that you don't want these suggestions pulling data from. And at the end of this video, I can show you a way to prevent Google from using this type of data to begin with. This new personalization in play feature was announced last month, but it has now just begun to roll out to the general public. So if you don't see this new section right now, then that's okay. Just try and remember to check for it again in a week or two. So first, we want to tap on the profile image in the top right corner, and then look toward the bottom of this menu. You should see a new personalization in play menu. So if you have this feature available to you, you'll see it and we can tap on it right there. And you'll see the various options here. We're told that you are getting more personalized experiences in Google Play, an area for other personalized options, there's a section for data saved by the Play Store and a related Google settings menu that shows you data from your other Google services. But if we focus on the top section here, let's tap on the other Play personalization options menu. And from here, we can choose to stop Google from using our device details when curating these suggestions. And we can also tap on the manage link down here for your play content. And this is what will show every single application or game that you've downloaded from the Google Play Store. So depending on how long you've been using Android or how often you install apps and games, your list here could show dozens of apps and games, hundreds of apps and games, or even thousands of apps and games. So this menu here would be where Google is looking to determine what types of apps and games that are being suggested to you. So if you don't want to see a certain genre of apps and games recommended, then you can go through this list and disable those types from this menu here. Now having to toggle them off individually is not ideal and not having a search option isn't that great either. But that's how it is right now. So hopefully we will see Google improve upon this feature in the future. So thankfully, we don't have to disable all of these one by one if we want to block all of this type of personalized curation. So if we go back to the main personalized and play menu here, and we tap on this first feature, play personalization in history, we then get access to our web and app activity option. And we can disable this by tapping on that drop down menu there and either selecting turn off or turn off and delete activity. So if you really want to wipe all of the data that Google is using for personalized content, then select this bottom option there. In my opinion, personalized recommendations like this are a double-edged sword. With this feature turned off, you'll get generic ads and suggestions for just about everything under the moon because Google has no idea what type of content you enjoy. 
but having this type of feature enabled does allow Google to collect a bunch of data on you, which they can then use to try and display ads and suggest content that it has determined you may have an interest in. Having this type of granular control can go a long way to no longer seeing suggestions about things you have no interest in. But sadly, it won't remove those ads or block those suggestions entirely. Google will always want to push new apps and products to you. It's how they can afford to provide many of its services. So many of us use Gmail as our main email provider because it's free and we enjoy the features that it provides. But few of us are willing to pay $10 or $20 per month just to use it. So we end up having to deal with stuff like this. Now, let me know what you think of this new feature down in the comment section below. And please remember to like this video while also subscribing to the channel since it really helps us out.